I'm just gonna share an overview of payments, of Rapid, and we'll actually talk about a use case in online gaming. We did talk about this in the previous live stream, but here we're just digging just a little deeper on what that looks like. Again, running through Rapid documentation and then completing the request signature, the request in Python, we'll do list payments and then create a payment. Uh, so this idea for every exist, uh, every business that exists uh, accepting payments, um, this is something that is uh, true to, to every business that is sustainable. Uh, I, you know, I'm from San Francisco and unfortunately we've had different businesses that have survived or, or not, you know, throughout uh, the years, throughout the pandemic, throughout just times where they've struggled. Uh, and of course, accepting payments and enough to be able to sustain themselves is so important. This is so important for every business. And so here's just an overview of what it, what it would entail, you know, every business accepting payments. And so the ones who are able to do enough with the options available to them, they will be sustained. And so through what we saw actually a lot of restaurants where I live around in San Francisco uh, who weren't able to transition or offer their services online. So for a delivery service, uh, that would be something that would they would be able to sustain themselves. And so for online gaming, this is absolutely essential to be able to do this online. Uh, and then where at, where would they sell, you know, their service from who, you know, who's buying and then with what this is important because if you are going cross border, across, uh, you know, different countries, you would need specific payment methods uh, for those countries, you know, for local, a local experience. And so these are payment options really for their customers in providing this. I'm gonna head to the next slide and really talk about online gaming. And so this is a very conservative number, uh, but uh, the, of course the 2023 is a little bit more accurate. Um, right now we're getting close to this number, it, you know, about 230 billion in, in just the valuation for the online gaming industry. We talked about mobile last time. Actually, mobile is surprisingly a large chunk of online gaming revenue, but it is projected to grow in the next few years to over 300 billion. And this, again, this is a very conservative estimation. It's by PwC, PricewaterhouseCoopers. And so if we go and just look at uh, what it looks like in, in these online options for for payments for gaming and so in let's say you have an in-game purchase for you know gaming you of course would buy the game uh, and it was interesting how this has developed uh, over time previously before online games they would basically release uh, right around this time actually release uh, pre holiday season maybe leading up to uh, black friday and they would they have a very, very, very limited amount. And then so uh, Black Friday, it, everything runs out. And then actually right before Christmas, they would release, open the floodgates and release all of the rest of their stock. And so these are for like console offline games, how they used to do it. But now it's basically like everything is rolling and you just buy online and, and you can buy whenever. Of course, the launch dates are, are super important. And so... Yeah, this is um, different ways. Now they don't just buy the game; they can buy within the game. Um, you know, they can buy different skins. They can buy uh, basically different expansion packs uh, that where, that extend the life cycle of the game. Uh, so people are continuing to buy. They can get revenue and and have developers still working on these games. And of course, you have now games for multiple platforms because it's online uh, there are uh, the um, within game purchases but then if you go to the company 
website. You can make purchases there as well as third party credit companies uh, where you know you would go to a neutral website and you could buy for multiple different games, multiple different consoles uh, there. So all of that would really include different countries, you know, uh, the audience, which is about you know 18 to 35 roughly, of course, mainly focusing in that area. And then, um, and then you have a card, bank account, e-wallet, uh, virtual account, uh, of course, different focuses in different regions um, for that. And so here you have, I talked a little bit about the evolution of, of gaming or what it used to be like. Here is really a picture of the evolution of fintech. And so before the internet, uh, of course, it was all offline. And then uh, with the internet, you had uh, card payments. Uh, you had card payments that would be even in um, point of sale. Uh, those would be connected online. And then moving to the cloud, uh, where that would be uh, you know, kind of hosted uh, and you had more uh, storage uh, hosted in, in the cloud uh, and that quickly moved to mobile payments and uh, you know, now we see mobile payments uh, very dominant. Uh, but here we, we move forward and now we have all these different aspects of payments and so it's very hard to sync them all together and that's the, really the idea of rapid one integration uh, one connection and as you grow uh, as the fintech industry grows uh, you're just able to have that service uh, grow uh, with your business uh, and so for rapid uh, we have uh, multiple different platforms multiple different products that we uh, offer uh, to kind of represent this all-in-one integration. Uh, first, of course, Rapid Collect, uh, accepting payments uh, as a developer, as a, as a business. Um, of course, this is uh, so important uh, for as the idea of every business accepts payments. Uh, Rapid Disperse, of course, if you are um, a business that uh, in any way uh, needs help, you know, if you uh, all every one business can't do it all as far as every aspect of their business with when it comes to hiring more people getting vendors to uh, help with different services whether it's even just marketing um, that rapid disperse comes into play where you could pay out your employees you can pay out contractors uh, you can pay out other vendors and businesses and then rapid wallet is absolutely just kind of a, a X factor where you are able to host funds um, in different currencies. Even if you wanted to provide this service for others, gaming could definitely, definitely be beneficial to this where you are hosting different currencies and hosting for uh, your customers um, using Rapid Wallet. Uh, and then we, of course, have Rapid Issuing issuing cards and even virtual accounts where you could accept payments and then we have different services uh, you know uh, when it comes to compliance and these are really different categories for payments one thing i did want to point out is we do have our open api available in postman we'll uh, continue to share more about that and you, you can test that out um, yeah that's exciting and uh, uh, that will continue to grow as we share more and so i'll move to the next slide and this is really a, a visual picture of what it looks like for one integration and so you you integrate with rapid as a developer and then you have available services in multiple countries uh different um you know compliance services uh, different payment methods uh banking services uh, as well as fx when you are doing cross-border within that region and across the globe. Uh, and that all uh, within uh, Rapid, uh, Rapid itself has different payment gateways that it has uh, worked hard to put together. And now with one integration, you have access. And so this is more of, of what it would look like if you were to take on this service, integrate and provide this and make money for others. 
And so as you are integrating with Rapid, you offer this service for another company or multiple other companies and they get access to that. And so you can charge them your fees in using this service built on top of Rapid. Talking about FinTech, each of these companies have uh, a tie to FinTech uh, and they each provide a service and it's not always payments. And so Ikea, Uber, Rappi, they do different things. Furniture or, or delivery of people or transportation or delivery of really anything with Rappi, I believe. And, and so <clears throat> we provide services in, in, through payments uh, for these companies. They can offer different payment methods for their customers across the globe or different countries. Of course, I think PaySafe is a payment provider for the entertainment industry, kind of like concerts. Then Lano is uh, an HR, uh, you know, payouts company where it does it can do payroll. Um, this idea of making money in online gaming using fintech. And, and so here really some steps, you know, you would find a service for online gamers, you know, gaming companies on a high frequency. This could be even just starting out as a blog and providing and building an audience. Um, this could be jumping into immediately just selling for your country uh, or where you are credits and offering payment methods. Whereas if that didn't offer weren't offered uh, in game um, that could translate uh, as a third party or yeah whatever you are are providing that would be unique and, and start to to grow uh, you would grow users and then really the the financial services of this again if if you are selling skins any type of gaming credits or customization Expansion packs are huge, again, for continuing the, the life cycle of the game. You know, I'm sure it was shorter and, and now it lasts longer because gamers can play longer because there is more content for a game after it's released. And so, of course, offering the right payment methods for gamers for that. Um, and then as you grow, you can... Um, include other consoles for games as it's released even start to expand to other um, gaming mediums uh, where it's whether pc or xbox playstation um, you know whatever mobile of course and so here is an example of exactly that uh, a company that is providing you know, a service as far as, you know, over, I think, three or four million users. Now, people will go on the C game network and they would be able to buy whatever they're looking for, whether it's buy the actual games, buy expansion packs, buy credits for games. And then that would be able to import or you really translate to the different consoles. And so they were looking for different payment methods to expand to more countries uh, and with rapid they were easily able to do that <clears throat> and so as you are developing as you are building with rapid uh, on the rapid api uh, here are just different available resources uh, with uh, and kind of within the the rapid developer community of course we have our documentation uh, we have our postman uh, collections now one with the API uh, that is uh, just a collection that's put together as well as the open API uh, we have github repos just for you to immediately uh, get a quick start our uh, community forum uh, we have our discord in which we're uh, uh, just gathering now um, a lot of our, our support is uh, happens through our community forum uh, as well as our email uh, and then we have our uh, different tutorials whether it's online youtube video uh, or just uh, through articles uh, of course we have live meetups 
um, online events and then conferences. Uh, we just had one in uh, uh, Berlin uh, with We Are Developers. Uh, of course, here is uh, just a very, very simplified diagram of what it looks like uh, on how Rapid was put together. Again, there are hundreds of microservices uh, in the back end of Rapid, but uh, really built on top of AWS using MongoDB and MySQL, uh, uh, uses React for the front end. Uh, all of the client portal is built with React, uh, as well as the checkout pages, and then the back end uh, using Node.js. Um, and so, yeah, this is just an encouragement to get started and start building, uh, really uh, providing a service and, and start to build a business. This is, um, you know, the reality that every business accepts payments and uh, FinTech will continue to just grow and grow. Um, and so encouragement to start uh, and grow now. Uh, and so I want to go through some Python examples. Um, we'll first look at the rapid documentation um, as I move over here. Um, again, newly refreshed documentation. Uh, McKay, who is here on this call, uh, of course, uh, amazing effort, amazing work done uh, by him uh, in putting this all together. And so there's a, a get started section. You can walk through uh, among, every, uh, among everything here. Uh, this is all of our really documentation in one place. It has a dark mode and light mode, which I like. Um, as you get started, uh, you can see different use cases as well as uh, you know step-by-step -step, uh, procedures to set up your account. You just go to login. That will take you to the client portal and you can sign up. I'm gonna go through uh, make your first API call right here. Um, and so it would just walk you through and, and doing um, an account setup, uh, grabbing your API keys. I can show that in a little bit. And that'll uh, lead you to um, download Postman if you want to just get started with that. Uh, it's super easy to uh, input your API keys in there and, and send um, hit send and st get started in there to check out the API and, and the responses. What we're going to do today is uh, calculate the request signature um, and do that by, um, well actually it, it here it, it's uh, already uh, basically uh, calculated for you. All you do need to do is put in your uh, secret key and access key and save that in a file. Um, and then uh, grab your API keys. And so I'm gonna first show that and do that. Um, you know, you can just copy it here. Uh, and then what I have here is the, that actual same file. Um, it's all here, you just paste that in. And then of course they're, they're where you put your secret key and access key. Uh, I'm just showing, just for the example today, uh, how I input it and save it in here. Definitely recommend um, using variables and, and uh, you know, you could save this in a different environment file um, and uh, do that. And so um, here I'm in client portal in my sandbox account. I'll turn that on. And then what you're gonna do is go to developers and then grab your API keys here. Um, you'll save them uh, and basically import them here, uh, uh, the secret key and access key. And then once you have those, uh, you can go back to the uh, Make Your First API Call page uh, and then go, uh, you save that file, uh, you saved your keys, uh, and then uh, here is a, a code file for list countries and so you can save this as well uh, copy it um, i've uh, just saved it here uh, called list.py um, and so now we are uh, basically ready to um, ready to go uh, so this is our 
uh, request and it'll just tell you to set up your environment. Um, and so right now, uh, let's see, I am in the right place. Yep. And so I'm just going to make sure my environment is all set up. Um, so I'm just going to do pip install virtual environment. And then I'm going to install requests, make sure that is installed. Um, I'll clear that. And so now uh, I could make my first request. I can do uh, Python 3 um, list.py. And so here we see the response uh, for all of the countries um, listed. Um, and uh, yep, yeah, and we can see that uh, here's uh, USA um, here, and and so that yeah, that's your first API call. Um, if you move uh, forward and go to uh, create payment in Python, um, now you can start to uh, look at uh, just testing different payment methods. And so we're going to uh, follow this as well. Um, uh, and we can do the same thing. And so we will copy this. Uh, uh, let me clear this. Uh, and then you just paste it in here. And so again, uh, as you already have your utilities file, you just save this right in that same folder. This is using a um, card payment method. Visa card uh, with some sandbox information, uh, and then uh, it's gonna pay in euros. You could also do uh, British pounds uh, if you want, um, uh, and then uh, fifty dollars, uh, or, or really 50, 50 euros, uh, or British pounds, um, <clears throat> and um, yeah, that is uh, what we're gonna do today. And so I'm going to go ahead and put this in and then create payment.py. And so we see a success. Uh, we see this has gone through. Uh, um, and so we see that amount uh, zero or uh, sorry, 50. Um, and then it did create a payment method ID uh, and save that uh, as that has gone through um, now with the information here. Um, and then the next action, it says, because it's in uh, the UK, um, 3DS is uh, rel relevant, uh, absolutely. And so as I uh, do that, we are going to um, just verify the 3DS on the card. Uh, if it works, it should uh, redirect to uh, the complete uh, payment URL. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that, open it. Looks like it opened and I'll just bring it up here. And so this is the just the 3DS simulator uh, for the card. I'll put in um, the sandbox values, hit continue. Uh, and so it looks like it went through. Of course, this is uh, the rapid homepage, but you could redirect it to any page that the user would see. Um, and so, yeah, that's what it looks like to uh, make your first API call, uh, as well as run through uh, your first uh, create payment um, uh, here uh, using rapid. If you want to just look around for a few more resources. You can hit right under the those first two pages. Make your first API call and community resource or uh, and create payment. Uh, you can go to community resources. Has uh, really uh, all the different uh, resources for a developer on getting started. Uh, code samples, videos, tutorials, walkthroughs, articles, uh, as well as our product change log and. Um, yeah, just more programs for you to uh, build with Rapid and, and partner with, with Rapid. Um, 
Awesome. So, uh, yeah. Uh, again, uh, thank you so much for watching. Um, yeah, we just ran through this example. Uh, awesome. Well, that is uh, all for the demo. I just wanted to open up this time. Any questions, any thoughts, uh, anything you'd like to see? Again, welcome everyone. Um, good to have you here. Uh, cool. I, I, Hector Ryan says, uh, esports gaming industry is a really big deal currently. Yeah, and it's just going to grow. Um, I know <clears throat> companies are, uh, I know Meta, you know, invested hugely in the the metaverse and kind of seemed to, like it was too early but i feel like that's just going to grow um exponentially and that's all going to be related um, okay yeah so hector you say you're seeing quite a few hackathons related to esports currently yeah yeah it makes sense um, they want to hit on hit on what's popular uh, what's hot um, that's awesome. Uh, and I know Isaac here, he's actually developed some uh, cool games in Python. Um, uh, definitely. Hey. Hey, yeah, Isaac, we're, I was just thinking of your games um, that you have uh, put together. Uh, can, you, can you tell us a little bit about your uh, some of the games you've uh, you put together? Well, it's just, uh, yeah, just as a hobby, I just create video games for game jams, and, and that's it. I'm really not, not integrating payments into that. It's just most of, more on the side. Um, yeah, just uh, just a few video games here and there for, for game jams. Nothing fancy. Nice. Yeah, and I've I played, I played one of those games and I beat it. <laughs> <laughs> it took me, it took me a little bit, not too long, but it was it was fun. <clears throat> um, uh, Hacknog says uh, Isaac an Unreal Engine game jam is coming up next month. Ooh. <laughs> Sounds. Uh... Yeah, thanks. I mean, I I don't really use super heavy engines. I just um, I I mainly code the games in JavaScript or very small engines that are for uh, retro video games. So uh, yeah, I I sometimes use like Godot or something like that. Don't really haven't tried it. I'm not, I'm not doing anything like huge, I'm just doing like small retro games uh, using very small engines and just like mainly code in JavaScript or Lua or Python I haven't really used for video games, but I want to. Yeah, awesome. Hacknark says, uh, yeah, I feel you. Uh, Godot is fun. Uh, is that how you pronounce it? Um, yeah, it's pretty but... Writing games, making games is uh, it's pretty fun. Yeah. Pretty frustrating at the beginning, but then it gets really, really fun. Mm. Yeah, and I, I think it's interesting too, where if you look at the gaming industry itself, um, like the majority of its revenue, not majority, but uh, probably, or definitely the largest part of the revenue is, is mobile, um, all those microtransactions in mobile. And so you never, never underestimate just, you know, even small games um, or games that are built on just really lightweight engines. Um, uh, certainly, uh, Hacknark says, I guess you can um, Pygame library if you want to start game dev using Python. Yeah. Um, and, you know, what one of the most dominant mobile games is like, the jewels, the different jewel games. Those are, uh, I know, like DC came out with like a just a jewel game, and it's one of their top 
uh, games now. And so um, it's, it's crazy how people will just like to enjoy small, definitely simple games um, on their mobile phone, whereas now you have also like vast, hugely uh, like, uh, you know, pioneering games built on consoles. Um, you know, as well as you have old games reappearing. I think, you know, of course, one of the top games like Halo for Xbox, it just released on different platforms like Steam. And and so that's just more revenue that they're building on on something that is, I'm sure there is uh, a lot of development done to re-release that. But um, yeah, just kind of refreshing and um, building more revenue on, on uh, old projects. So. <clears throat> yeah, Akinrak says exactly. COVID really changed the game. Now even my dad, seven years old, plays FIFA and Call of Duty. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> uh, nice. Uh, <clears throat> cool. Um, awesome. Well, uh, thank you everyone for gathering. Uh, any other thoughts or? questions um, um, we'd love to really um, expand this uh, as we gather and, and really bring on also others and so if you have, a, if you have an idea of uh, um, anything to bring um, oh last comment uh, Hecknark says my mom does work out using the game Just Dance nice <laughs> that is yeah I've seen uh, tons of people use that and uh, even just go on YouTube and, and watch some of those uh, replays and recordings. It's like content from Just Dance streamers. <laughs> um, awesome. Yeah. Yes, it's fun. Um, cool. Well, thank you everyone, everyone for gathering. Uh, thanks for those who are watching. Uh, if you're watching this and, and replaying, be sure to comment below and just let us know what you like to play, what game you like to play, and uh, if you're building anything as all as uh, as well yourself, uh, as far as um, awesome, yeah, waiting for the next upcoming hackathon. Uh, Hacknark said, "Well, <clears throat> well, of course, uh, to keep you in the know, uh, you can join our Discord um, or just follow us at uh, Rapid Devs um, on Twitter." Uh, join our community. Uh, as always, uh, thanks for watching and have a great day.